Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial on more accurately walkthrough. We're going to focus on some cool erosion type effects. I had released a couple of uh, uh, trailers or teasers in the uh, last uh, month and a half or so. And now finally I found the time to, uh, you know, tidy up the templates I had created and record this little video. So over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll walk you through one of the templates and at the end, I will also um, maybe spend a couple of minutes on the other one, which is basically a variation of the first one, but it has got some cool additional stuff like the growing ivy you saw. Right, so on the screen right now, we've got the metal sizzling template. And uh, for the first couple of minutes, I'll focus on uh, the out of the box use, right? So when you download this, basically, if you just wanna change some text, uh, change maybe a bit of the timing, uh, this is for you. After that, I'll focus a bit more on how I accomplished this effect. So I will go through the various aspects of the flow, but as said, it won't be in uh, an awful lot of detail, but it will be useful, I think. Okay, so let's focus on the out of the box use first. So uh, first of all, we've got the text here, right? On the top of the flow. And as you can see here, I've got sizzle as the text and I'm using the font impact. If you don't have this font, it won't work out of the box. You will need to change it to something different, to whatever, right? It will just work. Um, and you can change obviously the text. So let's do that. Let's call this metal. Okay, so everything updates automatically. So that is really cool. Uh, secondly, I'm using some textures. Uh, and they should be loaded automatically because I'm making use of a relative uh, file path, right? So it uses the comp as the base and then it will go into the assets folder. Should this not work, then basically you will need to direct it to the right folder. Uh, so uh, what I used here really is a uh, photo of my pizza shovel, uh, a fairly poor photo but that was good enough for the purposes here because you know we're talking about erosion so you don't need to have high quality textures to start with maybe that is not really an accurate statement but in this particular case it worked out well so that is a uh, texture number one if you want to change it to something else of course be my guest do it um, and then there's one other texture and that is over here i'm showing it here and that is a bit of a, a sort of a stony type texture and again relative path so it should load automatically okay so basically uh, if you want to change those change those you can of course also change the color a bit and this that and the other so this particular texture is being used in two ways first of all it is being used as the background of the sort of the of the text well sorry the background would be here of the text but also once it starts peeling away it's sort of showing the inside of the text and it's actually the very same texture of course you could use a different texture for that okay so um, that is really it in terms of the out of the box use now if you want to change some of the timing uh, that may be for your particular case very important uh, one of the main things happens over here in this fast noise this is the main erosion and here you can see the brightness is being keyframed. And if we zoom in a bit here, as you can see at the start, there's nothing. And then at a certain point, things will start appearing. And as you can say, you see everything else updates. So this is really the main thing uh, in terms of the animation. So it is very, very simple to change it. Just, you know, change the keyframes either directly here or in the uh, spline editor. Uh, whichever way you fancy. Okay, so um, if you're not interested in what happens underneath the hood, just download the stuff and have fun with it. Uh, but if you are interested, stick along and I'll explain a bit. Okay, so let's start here on the left hand side. So you see a little note here. Um, it basically says, for simplicity's sake, I'm not using a linear workflow. A lot of professional or 
I should say, all professional uh, compositors and such will make use of a linear workflow. Now, I'm not going into the detail as to what that means, but essentially you will need to convert incoming images to a linear space. Um, I have not done this, uh, reason being really is I wanted to keep it simple, but also I had started and all my color corrections and such are based on the non-linear image coming in and I would need to do, redo the whole thing or tweak everything and I simply don't have the time for that. So, but again, if you want to do things quote unquote properly, you would need to use the gamma tool and such, right? But there's no absolute need, right? If you like the result as it is, don't worry too much about it. So uh, what we're doing here is we're loading in the texture, uh, we're color correcting it, or changing the color somewhat, resizing it to a standard HD size. And then the first thing that happens is basically we add a bunch of stains. Oh, and that's actually the second bit of the uh, animation. I failed to mention that these uh, stains are being animated onto uh, the background as well. And that happens over here okay so that's really the second thing now um, the next really essential bit that happens is the cutouts are being created here and as said that is being driven by this main erosion okay so the main erosion basically goes into a bunch of nodes where it sort of i suppose combines uh, the text with the erosion and then basically performs the cutout. It is a bit more complicated than that, but for now this will suffice. Um, so we've got the cutout and then we'll do a bit of displacement. And as you can see here, it starts taking shape. It looks already a bit 3D. So maybe I should have mentioned from the start, the whole thing is a bit of a faux 3D approach. Um, so it's, I'm not making use of any text 3D note. It's a simple flat 2D text and uh, I'm faking the 3D aspects. So next one up, uh, some further replacement, which makes it even more 3D. And as you can see here as well, there's a bit of edge erosion. And that happens up here, you know, directly after the main text. It will do, um, you know, a few things around ensuring there is a, an edge that is eroded. Um, Next one that happens then, and it may be a bit hard to see, uh, but there will be a shadow, right? And it will be a shadow just underneath here, right? To give it a bit of depth. You will not see this un uh, until there is a background. And actually, of course it is over here. So if I just quickly disable the shadow node, then you will see the difference, right? So you see this disappearing. This looks much more flat, enabled again. See, it is, it gives it a bit of depth. So the other thing you see here is a sort of an edge type erosion and it sort of puckers up a bit, I suppose. And that is happening over here. Now there are many way, different ways of dealing with this, but um, you could use a filter uh, essentially to, uh, to just focus on the edges, right? And then erode and dilate based on that filter output. But in my particular case, I still use an erode dilate, but that then is uh, combined with a channel boolean, and essentially that's the way I approach it. Uh, I said, you know, I'm not really going into all of the detail here, but you can see what's happening here, right? I'm really focusing on the edges here, and then I color those edges in, right? So that's a this color corrector, but then also I do the displacement of the edges a bit. So some further displacement. So if I switch this off, right? And on again, you can see it's being displaced. Um, then, and let me show that here, I'm adding the background here as in the inside of the text. And as you can see, it is being applied outside of the text as well, but we cut it out later again, right? So that it is just applied to effectively uh, behind the erosion. So that sort of mimics the inside of the text. Okay. So once we've done that, we add the sizzle, right? Uh, so that's a bit of that sort of barbecue type look, um, as if the edges are being eroded by fire or some smoldering fire. 
Uh, and essentially, what's, how that's done, it's making use of the very same fast noise, the main erosion fast noise. Uh, I put it through a filter, like here. Right? So it's sort of focused more on the edges and you know, change the brightness contrast a bit. And then also, I restrict the effect by having another fast noise going into brightness contrast node. And basically, I use that to cut things out. Right? This is a fairly standard use of using a brightness contrast with the alpha ticked and the gain all the way down. Right? So it is really going to cut out uh, certain elements. Like here, you can see, you can hardly see it because most of it has been cut out by this fast noise. If I disable it, well, everything is disabled, but it, that's because it works in the uh, inverted way. But uh, essentially, if I would disable the whole node, brightness contrast, you can see it would be applied everywhere. And that looks way over the top, right? As said, and therefore I'm restricting it. Um, and of course you could uh, animate that. And I do that, it may not be that apparent, but I've got a seeth rate specified here so that the fast noise that is sort of restricting it, uh, restricting the uh, appearance of the smoldering effect, that is moving. And that's why you've got that sort of smoldery type animated effect. And I apply a bit of a soft glow and such, and then basically you get this. And then ultimately, oops, sorry, you get this. Okay, so I set, then I perform another cutout. There we go. Add a shadow, and now the shadow really will be behind the overall text. So if I switch this off, you can see that is quite a dramatic difference, right? Because I apply a lot of softness to it. So if I zoom out a bit, off and on, and again, that really sells the effect of it looking uh, 3D. Okay. And um, then essentially I'm adding the background in, right? So that's the very same texture I was talking about earlier on. And what I do as well, and it may be really hard to see, um, in fact, it is really hard to see, but I add a little bit of uh, extra gain to the picture, but I'm restricting that uh, by looking at the same sizzle so that you basically have some more um, brightness around where the smoldering fire would be, right? Again, to help to sell the effect. And ultimately, I add uh, an ellipse, right, uh, to have that sort of darkened effect around it. And then basically we're there, right? So uh, in summary, really, uh, we've got a texture, then we cut it out, the texture, and we cut the holes into it. We apply a background behind it, and then we have a whole bunch of displaced nodes to help basically make it look 3D. And that's really all there is to it. But as said at the start, it is still quite time consuming to really tweak all the parameters to make it look somewhat, well, real, I suppose. Okay, but uh, maybe before we go to the next composition, let's very briefly focus on a bit more on one of the displays nodes, right? Uh, so really, uh, that is quite essential to get that right. So let's display this in uh, this one here. There's a viewport here. So <clears throat> I won't explain the whole node by itself, but the very important thing here is the light power. Once we switch that off or dial it down, it'll completely disappear. So if I undo that, here you can see this really creates that sort of outlined 3D type effect. And also what helps here, and it makes it look a bit rounded, is to increase the spread somewhat. So if we would dial that down to zero, Really, we've got very harsh edges, edges, and it just doesn't look very good. But in other circumstances, it may look very good, right? It really depends on the use case. So let's undo that. See, and that really helps. And what I do here is I've got several displaced nodes all focusing on certain aspects of the displacement. But play around with it and see how you go. 
Now, let's briefly look at the other composition, right? So as said, this was really based on the same base template, but I changed a bunch of things. Now, uh, I have to say some of the, uh, the approach here, right, is a bit different because you don't really have a cutout completely. Well, you do, but it's more of an eroded rock and it's less harsh. I could have used a different approach here, but I didn't want to, to redo the whole thing. So I just made the base template work. So as said, it may not be the most efficient way of accomplishing this, but that's the way the template works right now. So the only additional thing I want to focus on really is the ivy, right? Uh, that is really this box here. It's a particle system and it has got some quite nifty stuff in there, especially the P custom. The P custom makes the IV, uh, or essentially animates the IV. So I said I won't go through all the detail, but let me just briefly show some of the formulas in here. Uh, here, you see things happen with the velocity of the particles, and um, it is making use of a parameter here. Now, or our formula here, I may do a separate tutorial on this if people are interested, because I think you can use it for an awful lot of stuff. So let me just briefly show the animation here, right? So if we start here and you see it, it is a bit slow. Uh, I, I can't recall at what um, frame it really starts. Uh, here you can start to see it moving. Now, uh, one thing though, sometimes the particle system in, uh, DaVinci Resolve or Infusion misbehaves a bit, um, especially when you start using P Customs and such. Uh, I, I don't know why exactly, maybe it's a bug, maybe it's something different, but sometimes well, if you start seeing it uh, flickering or it starts moving about sort of erratically, what you tend to need to do is basically go to the P Render and do a restart. And you may need to flush or purge the cache as well. Right, so this can happen from time to time. I've had it with different project files, totally different types of particle systems. It's just something I suppose for now we'll need to live with. But as I said, it's uh, fairly easily resolved by restarting it. On the very uh, uh, rare occasion, you can see it in the render as well. But what I tend to do is I'll go for a certain look and then save it and then render it. Now to change the look, right here so you've got ivy here coming up the r especially and the o if you don't like that right this is also done in some of somewhat random way but you can apply a different random seed so if you reseed it here takes a bit but as you can see here it will have a different effect so basically reseed seed it go to sort of the end of the composition i suppose and so this would be the result based on this particular seed. If you don't like it, do it again. And basically until you see something you like, then save it and uh, purge the cache, restart the particle system and such, and then that should all work. Okay, so that's I think all I had to say for now about this one. Oh, maybe one tiny more thing. This is the leaf which is basically the particle for the particle system. And it's from my garden. And it's a really crappy photo, but it works. Okay. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this walkthrough. As I said, it was not a complete tutorial. If you're interested in some more of the detail though, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if you're interested, especially in the, uh, in the particle system in the IV, I can do a different tutorial on that. Again, let me know. So in the meantime, have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.